Hello everyone. Welcome to this video on control charts series. This is in succession to our previous video on introduction to control charts. Just to reiterate, control charts are graphs used to study how a process changes over time. We use control charts to monitor the stability of a process and determine if a process is stable and ready to be improved. Which means that unless a process is stable, we should not carry out any improvement projects. Control charts for continuous data are of three types. Individual and moving range chart, X bar and range chart, and X bar and standard deviation chart. In this video, we will explore individual and moving range chart. We use this chart when subgroup size is 1. That is, data are collected as individual observations, popularly known as IMR or XMR chart. If we have larger sample sizes, we get more sensitive charts. Then why do we go for a sample size of 1? The answer is we use a sample size of 1 for very slow processes or where it is very expensive to obtain measurements. For example, some kind of destructive test. IMR chart is extensively used to showcase process performance post improvement, that is pre and post analysis. It is a combination of two charts. Let's look at a sample IMR chart here. Top one is the individual chart which helps in assessing the process center. Bottom one is the moving range chart which plots process variation. Number of data points in the moving range chart will always be one less than the individual chart because moving range is calculated by taking the absolute value of the difference between each measurement and the previous one. Important to note here is that variation in an in-control process is usually inherent. It is random. Let's understand the control limits of an IMR chart. What we need here would be n, that is the number of data points, xi, that is value of each data point. For example, if we have 10 data points, that is n is equal to 10, and they are valued from or they are numbered from 1 to 10 in a sequence, then x4, that is value of the fourth data point, would be 4. Similarly, value of the seventh data point, that is x7, would be 7, and so on. Then the center line of the individual chart or the x chart, that is the average or the mean, would be x bar is equal to summation of xi divided by n where i can take values from 1 to n. This notation that you see here is called the summation. It sums up all different values of a random variable x. Moving range or mr for an ith item would be the absolute value of the difference between each measurement and the previous one. And center line of the moving range chart will be the summation of mri divided by n minus 1. n minus 1 because moving range chart has one data point less than the individual chart. Do you remember that? Great. So as I said a couple of minutes back, these are what we need. Now here are the formulas that we use to calculate the upper control limit and lower control limit for individual charts and then for moving range charts where E2, D3 and D4 are control chart constants which have table values. We can get those values from available tables for control chart constants corresponding to the sample size that we have. So this was all about IMR charts today. Now you know when to use an IMR chart in your project and the idea behind it. Our next video in this series would be X bar and R chart followed by X bar and standard deviation chart, chart. So get ready to enjoy both of them. Thank you very much for watching this video. Feel free to share your comments or get in touch with me on LinkedIn. Please subscribe to this channel by clicking the red colored subscribe button while watching the video. Cheers and have a good one.